Of course, the sisters and brothers, brothers and sisters, welcome. We come now at this time and in this way to think about uh, wolf medicine today and what that means in our lives. Now, when I say wolf medicine, you know, I remember, I think I've spoken before in the past about how American Indians, as a way of remembering stories and passing on oral history, uh, American Indians ascribe to different animals, different characteristics and attributes, you know, different teachings, what we call different medicines, which reflect the purpose for that medicine in each, per in each person's life. And, you know, uh, in this sense, we can easily say that saw has all medicines, all these teachings. But it's a way of helping to identify what people are called to do in their life, what purpose that God has called them to live in their life for the benefit of the greater community. And so it doesn't mean that we worship animals, because we don't. And a lot of people misconstrue that. We honor all life. And uh, so in that sense, you know, and Spirit is able to remind us that, you know, sometimes we get confused, we get distracted, uh, we're, we're human beings. And so, uh, you know, sometimes Spirit will send an animal to us to hang out and remind us of our purpose to help clarify us, you know, that whole repetition and reinforcement thing. And so today, uh, we are going to look at uh, wolf medicine and uh, the, in, the purposes, the characteristics described to different animals varies from culture to culture, from nation to nation, not only here in North America but around the world. But one of the universal teachings that seems to be ascribed to wolf is that wolves are the representation that have the purpose of being the, the prophets, the teachers. And uh, so we're going to look at that today, what that means. Our first reading today is going to be from the Hebrew Bible, Psalm 132, verses 1 to 5. Psalm 132, verses 1 through 5. O oh God, remember in David's favor all the hardships, hardships he endured how he swore to God and vowed to the mighty one of Jacob, I will not enter my house or get into my bed or slumber to my eyelids until I find a place for God, a dwelling place for the mighty one of Jacob. And our New Testament reading today is from the book of Hebrews. We're looking at Hebrews 5, 1 through 4. Hebrews 5, 1 through 4. Every high priest chosen from among mortals is put in charge of things pertaining to God on their behalf to offer gifts and sacrifices for wrongdoings. He is able to deal gently with the ignorant and wayward since he himself is subject to weakness. And because of this, he must offer sacrifice for his own wrongdoings as well as for those of the people. And one does not presume to take this honor but takes it only when called by God, just as Aaron was. Here are the words of the book of Hebrews. What has God called you to? What journey, what purpose has God given you to live in this life? 
I mean, our Indian religious tradition and our cultural ways, traditional ways, we have ceremonies that help people to gain that understanding. You know, uh, usually it starts pretty young, around the age of 12, that uh, people go through, the young boys, are, they go through the ceremonies, and uh, they are giving what's called a naming ceremony, and the name that they are given at the end of their completion of the, of the ritual process reflects the purpose that they are given in their life to help remind them, to affirm that they are in that purpose. For example, my Cherokee name is Waya Agli. Now, literally translated, that means wolf running. So in English, that can be translated most closely to being running wolf. And uh, so, that's my name. I am running wolf, Bill Running Wolf. That's how it, it came about. The reason that this uh, name was given to you is because it was given to me in that way was because of a vision and my being recognized by the elders in our Indian religious tradition in that way. And the vision came to me where I was shown long ago, uh, as the gray reveals, long time ago I was called in this way to be a prophet, a teacher, and a healer, which is the primary medicine and characteristics of wolf medicine. Since then, God has used me to inspire people to develop trust in God, to develop a quality relationship with Creator and with the rest of creation, including the spirit helpers, all life around us. All life is sacred. Everyone has a purpose in the great web that we all live a part of. And in that sense, that purpose has led me to doing what I do today. Not for my own glory, not for my own honor, but for the glory and honor of our Creator and to help improve the quality of life of all the people. And so it is with each and every one of our purposes. And we see here in the book of Hebrews how important recognizing and honoring and walking our purpose is in this great, great scheme of things. In the book of Hebrews in chapter 5, the story is shared that the high priest, those who carry the knowledge, the teachings, and the instructions for how to complete the rituals that needed to be done for the cleansing of the people, for the clearing of the slate of the wrongdoings, to basically set aside the consequences of poor judgment and un unwillingness to change, which we talked about last week, so that they're not held against the people and the people have the opportunity to continue to move forward, growing and evolving as spiritual beings and as human beings in a good and healthy way. Theoretically, anyways. But basically what we see here in, in Hebrews, it says flat out, you know, first of all, priests are human beings. And that's one of the things I do admire, admire about the book of Hebrews, which is, for many people, a very challenging book to read because it seems to be very legalistic in a lot of respects. It does seem to uh, be geared towards the uh, uh, cult of Melchizedek, for lack of a better term. But it also ties Jesus into that place of being the high priest, the ultimate high priest, the priest of all priests for all time. And it points out in, in verse 2 here that, you know, as teachers, as healers, as leaders, we are able to 
help other people move forward in a good way in as much as we are able to help ourselves move forward in a good way because we are all subject to the same human weaknesses. Being a priest does not remove our being human beings having to deal with the same realities as any other human being in our lives. Hopes, dreams, needs, wants, desires, all the above. We have to deal with those challenges while at the same time helping other people to also do it. There's no easy path. And God never promised it. It was going to be an easy path. That following the, the purpose that was given to us by God was ever going to be easy. But it is necessary. It is necessary for the wholeness and the well-being of everyone and not just ourselves. And so when we think about our purpose, we think about how it is going to impact not just ourselves, but everyone else involved. And that purpose helps us also to develop a greater quality relationship with the Creator. And we are not to take it for granted. And we are not to presume that it belongs to us because we have chosen it. It belongs to us because God has chosen it for us. And we have the responsibility of taking that very seriously. And when we don't take that seriously, and when we move away from our purpose, that's when things get complicated for us. That's when things really get difficult. Confusion, disharmony, dissonance, the whole nine yards. Our lives become challenging to the nth degree. For example, I knew a woman once, her name was Sharon. This was some years ago when I was living in uh, New Mexico in Taos and doing the healing work and things out, out there. And uh, this woman was from the northeast coast. And she was struggling with her life and her journey and her purpose. She had a lot of confusion, didn't know whether she was coming or going, a lot of relationship challenges, the whole nine yards. But she wanted help. She wanted to understand. And she went to this, uh, this thing where there was a ritual that took place. She did this ceremony. And because God cares, an angel of God, a spirit helper, came to her and said, get up, go to Taos, New Mexico, find this one whose name is Running Wolf, and he will show you your purpose. And she did. She had enough sense to get up, get in her car, against all odds, drove to Taos, New Mexico, walked into the first store she could find and said, do you know somebody named Running Wolf? And they said, yes, we do. And told her how to get a hold of them. And she showed up out of, out of our land or where we were doing our, our healing ceremonies and other things, and uh, our house church, and told me her story. Of course, it was not new to me. It had happened to me many times people all over the world. But I sat and told her what she needed to know. What God had called for her to be in her life. And what she needed to do to fulfill the purpose for which God intended her. when she saw how challenging it was going to be, she turned away. And that was the end of that. Never heard of her again. And unfortunately, that happens way more often than most people think about. When God takes time to send you a message and to bestow upon you the gift of a purpose in your life. There is no greater thing that can happen to you in your life. You know, when you turn away from that purpose, you turn away from God's gift. You will always
always feel empty in here. You will feel something is missing, some very part of you is missing. And your soul is carried off in two different directions. If one of you, one part of you wants to be doing your purpose, and the other part of you, sadly, walks that way. And when we think about this, we, uh, we go back to our psalm here, where David, as this is supposed to be a treatise about David here, and it talks about the hardships and the commitment, you know, that, that David had when God gave this lowly child shepherd, the youngest son in the family. God called him to be the king, to be God's messenger for the Israelites in the world. Everybody was shocked when that happened. The whole family was like, are you kidding? And this, this is what came down. And so here in Psalm 132, we get an idea, a glimpse, at how seriously David took this honor that was bestowed upon him. His commitment to God was to find a place to build the temple of God. And he would not rest no matter what hardship he had to go through, what it took. All the challenges he faced in his life, and he faced many challenges. Near death many times, almost lost his throne many times, and he persevered. He stood his ground. And he never wavered on his commitment to God to fulfill his purpose. And that is what we see here in Psalm 132. That affirmation that he did what he was called to do by God. And you can do some more research into that, more investigation of that, just as you can into Hebrews, to get that understanding of how significant it is to honor the sacredness of that gift that God has given you. David believed in his call. I believed in my call. Do you believe in your call? Have you done what you need to do in your life to fulfill your potential in fulfilling your purpose as God has chosen? We know that in the calm of our heart. What God has called us to become is made manifest. And we know that we will never be content until we move that direction no matter what. I urge you to pray for discernment for what purpose God has called you and to reaffirm your commitment to fulfilling that purpose and doing whatever it takes to honor the sacredness of that gift that God has given you. Walk in beauty.